Good evening, Wildcats, and welcome to the second episode of our speaker series. Tonight's topic is scholarships. However, it's not just for seniors and their families. There's some great information for underclassmen and their families, as well as middle schoolers and their families as you plan for the future. Tonight, we are excited to have three guests. First up will be high school counselor, Julie Zering, who will provide you some general scholarship tips and advice, and also show you how to navigate the scholarship area on the counselor's website at the high school. Next up will be CAS Career Center counselor, Kristen Quinley. She will talk specifically about scholarships for CAS Career Center seniors. And finally, we have Foundation Vice President, Alice Roach. Alice will talk about the Foundation scholarships, which total nearly $30,000 made available each year to HHS seniors. We hope you find this information informative I wish all our seniors great luck as they go through the scholarship application process. Hello and welcome to our discussion this evening on scholarships. I'm so glad that you have joined us. My name is Julie Zaring and I'm a counselor at Harrisonville High School. I wanted to start the discussion off with some information on scholarships in general. First of all, there are three different types of scholarships that you can apply for. There's local, institutional, and national. Local scholarships are community-based scholarships, so those within your city, county, maybe even state. They're normally not renewable, so that means that they are just going to be a one-time fund. Usually there's less applicants for these scholarships. They are oftentimes released in the spring, so it's important to start looking come January for a lot of these local scholarships. January, February, March, April, sometimes even May is when they will become available. Sometimes they require essays or letters of recommendation. There's also institutional scholarships. These are based in the university or college that you are planning on attending. Normally they are renewable, which means you can get them each year as long as you continue to meet the criteria that they are based on. There are automatic ones and competitive ones. Your automatic ones are usually based off of your GPA and your ACE or your ACT score. They are usually just automatically given after you've applied and been admitted to the school. Oftentimes, universities or colleges will have competitive scholarships as well. These normally require an additional application. It's important to go to your college's uh, financial aid page and look for scholarships as they will all be listed there and how you would apply for those. There are also national scholarships. These are usually through large national companies or organizations. Usually they have lots and lots of applicants, but usually the funding for them is, is very good. Uh, they are highly competitive, but great scholarships to look into as well. When thinking about financial aid and scholarships and funding your college, you also have to consider the FAFSA. This is the free application for federal student aid. You do not have to pay to fill this out. And in order to get any type of federal funding from the school, you do have to fill this out. Uh, this becomes available in October. Usually October 1st is when it opens up for the next school year. So when your student is a senior, they will start filling that out in October. The parent and the student must set up an FSA ID and they must use different emails. Also, please make sure that you use an email that you will always have access to. So students, do not use your Harrisonville Schools email as you will lose access to that after you graduate. I do have a link here for a page on our website that explains the FSA ID and gives you a link directly to the page that you, you uh, sign up for that. I also have a link here uh, that goes to our website that talks about um, just different step-by-step -step guides and information and help for the FAFSA. Uh, the FAFSA has gotten a lot easier over the years. They have uh, kind of streamlined it a little bit, which is great, but it still does uh, create a lot of questions for a lot of families. We have a college advisor, Ryan Husted, that is very, very knowledgeable on the FAFSA and can help you with any questions that you have. So if you get into the FAFSA and just aren't sure what to do, reach out to Ryan as he is a wonderful, um, source that we have that can help you with that. A plus scholarship is a scholarship that is available for Harrisonville High School. It's an awesome opportunity for our students. In order to earn the A plus scholarship, you have to have a 2.5 cumulative GPA. 
You have to be proficient on the Algebra 1 EOC, or you can use your ACT math score, and it will be based off of your GPA as to what that score would have to be. You have to have 95% attendance. You have to uh, earn 50 hours of tutoring and have signed up for the A-plus agreement. The A-plus scholarship can be used at numerous places. The one that uh, is probably most beneficial is your community colleges and technical programs. If you are certifi a certified A-plus student, it will pay for two years of your schooling, the majority of your two years. It might not pay for everything, but it will pay for a good portion of those two years at community college. So it's a great opportunity for students uh, to get some, some free money for school. If your option is to not go to a community college or technical school and you want to go to a four-year school, many of the four-year schools in the state of Missouri also offer A-plus scholarships. If you are an A-plus certified student, many of the schools will have a scholarship for you uh, being an A-plus certified student. So make sure you look into that as well. Things to think about regarding scholarships. First, please don't ever pay for scholarships. If you find one that says you have to pay a fee in order to get it, I would uh, discourage that. You shouldn't have to pay to get uh, free money or to get a scholarship. Many scholarships uh, require recommendations. So be thinking about people that will write you a good recommendation. Teachers, counselors, principals, people that you work for, your pastor, adults that you know you. Uh, those are people that you can talk to to see if they would be willing to write a recommendation for you. Make sure you talk to these people ahead of time. See if they would be willing to do that and then have a resume handy for when you do need that recommendation. Uh, they may see you in one setting but not know all of the many wonderful things that you do. So give them a resume so that they will have some additional information to put into their recommendation. Also, please make sure you give them plenty of time to write that recommendation. I would say on average a good two weeks is a great uh, time frame to give them to write their recommendation. Don't come to them on a Thursday and expect for them to have a recommendation written for you on Friday. So just make sure you give them pl plenty of time, be considerate of that. Scholarships can come from all sorts of places, oftentimes jobs, uh, parents' jobs, grandparents' jobs, aunts and uncles' jobs have scholarships available that, that we don't all know about. So ask at your, at your jobs, at your parents' jobs. Uh, find out if they have scholarships available. Check with your church. Check anywhere that you attend regular, regularly to see if there is a scholarship that is available there. It's also very important to stay organized uh, when you're working with scholarships because there are so many out there and there's different deadlines and different things. So uh, create a spreadsheet. Have a spreadsheet set out of all the scholarships that you want to apply for and their due dates. Uh, you can have a section for if you've completed that scholarship or not, if you sent it in, when you sent it in, if there was a password, what the password is. Being organized in the scholarship search is extremely important, so make sure that you do that. Just to think about for underclassmen, most of, most all of the scholarships that we have, especially on our spreadsheet, are for seniors. However, there are things that underclassmen can do to get ready, and there are some scholarships available for underclassmen. Two that are great scholarships to think about are the Casey Scholars for Freshmen and the Casey Scholars for Juniors. Our college advisor, Ryan, is going to, uh, has already started kind of talking to some classes about those two scholarships. They um, are available right now, and the due date is in February, but they are fantastic scholarships, kind of new ones that have come, come about in the last couple of years. So make sure that you're looking for that information. Ryan will be sending more information out on that as the next weeks uh, progress. Also check out our scholarships, uh, web, our, our spreadsheet on the website. There are some, as, as underclassmen, you can start looking at that spreadsheet to see which scholarships you would be able to apply for. We normally get the same scholarships every year. They usually are due right around the same date every year, and the applications usually do not change. So if you start looking at that spreadsheet now and knowing which ones you will be able to apply for, you can start looking at the applications and even filling some of them out so that your senior year, you can just copy and paste some of that stuff in. 
Great way to stay organized ahead of time. Again, create a spreadsheet of your own as to which ones you know you want to apply for when they become available, uh, and you will have a lot done before the hectic senior year. I also leave that spreadsheet up all summer. I change that out come August. So the summer is a great time to be looking through that to see which ones you would be able to apply for. Our website has some fantastic uh, information that I'm gonna show you here in a minute. Some of that is your transcript request. Many scholarships do require that you have a transcript. Uh, so it's important to know how to get that. I also have a page on FAFSA information as well as scholarship, scholarship information. So we are gonna go there now and I will be able to show you, uh, walk you through some of those phases. So here we are on the high school website. If you scroll down to the counselor page, you will see there's all sorts of different pages underneath counselors that you can access. First one I wanted to show you is the transcript re request. Uh, this is where you will, it gives you information on how to request a transcript. We have partnered with Parchment and you will set up a, a username and password there and you can request transcripts there and track when they are sent and when they are received. So that's a great page to know about for when you start filling out applications. As I mentioned earlier, we also have information on the FAFSA, step-by-step -step guides, uh, the link to the FSA ID, uh, lots of different information on here if you need help with the FAFSA. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we do have uh, Ryan, our college advisor, that can help you with the FAFSA as well. Next, let's look at our scholarship page. You click on the general scholarship information. This page just has all sorts of different all sorts of different information on scholarships. Uh, different search links that you can do and sign up for that have some great scholarships as well as some very specific uh, types of scholarships that you could look into. So this is a great page just to give you some general information on scholarships and some great places to search. The next one I want to show you is our scholarships spreadsheet. I update this every year, so it's it's new every year with the new scholarships coming through. I highlight our local scholarships in this yellow color, and as we scroll down here, um, I have our foundation scholarships, which are going to be talked about here in a little bit, in green, just so that they're easy to find. Now, please know that that doesn't mean that these other ones that are not highlighted are not important because they are fantastic ones as well. So just make sure that you're looking through all of them. Uh, I'm gonna walk through how to read this now. So let's start with um, the VFW scholarship here. So on the spreadsheet, the name of the scholarship is gonna be in this far column. In here, you're gonna find out when this scholarship is due and where you're going to turn it in. So this one, for example, uh, you're going to mail it yourself and there is a deadline, but with a mail, you need to make sure I have mail it early. I think it's due on the, actually on the 15th of April, but make sure you give yourself plenty of time. If you notice some of these up above, you're going to turn into me. If there's not a place to turn them in, usually it's an online application or the application itself will tell you exactly where to turn it in. Uh, the next column has how much that scholarship is worth. And then if you'll notice, you can scroll over. It gives you what the requirements are for this particular scholarship. Then there's usually a link to the application or to the web page, as you see on some of the others, that you will go to get the application. And over to the far side, I have what date it was posted. This is important because um, you can look at it, say you've, you've gone through and looked at it on 1-3, so then you can know anything that's been posted after the 3rd of January are ones that you need to look at. So it just hopefully streamlines your search a little bit. Also on this page, we have the foundation scholarships that again are gonna be talked about here in a little bit. Uh, so there's some links to that here, as well as links on our spreadsheet. So that is our website, kind of a, a quick overview of what to do on our website. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. I wanted to give you a quick list of the local scholarships. As I said on the spreadsheet, I do have them highlighted so they're easier to find. 
but here's kind of just a quick overview of local scholarships and the months that they are due in. Please keep in mind that normally those scholarships become available uh, about a month ahead of time. So there's some of these that I have listed here that you won't see on the spreadsheet yet. For instance, the Cass Regional Medical Center Foundation, that one becomes available on February 1st. And a lot of these others, again, will become available probably a month prior to uh, their due dates uh, in these months, in March and April. So just kind of keep that in mind, but these are some great scholarships for you to be uh, kind of keeping in mind and looking out for. And that is all I have for tonight. Uh, if you have any questions, my contact information is listed right here, and I would be more than happy to talk with you and help you through that. And again, thanks for joining us this evening, and I hope that you found this information useful. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Kristen Quinley, and I am the counselor at Cass Career Center. And for my presentation, I'm going to talk more specifically about Cass Career Center scholarships and uh, how to utilize our website to help students find additional scholarship information. So we're going to start um, at CCC's homepage, and so you would go to cascareercenter.com for that. Once you are at our homepage, um, you go to the For Students tab that's up here. And go down to the very bottom to the Counseling link or Counselor Connection link. This will take you directly to my website where I post um, all of my scholarship information that I receive. So under the Scholarship tab up here, you will find information about CCC-specific scholarships. Uh, you will find CTSO information and then links to a variety of other scholarship information. So let's start with the CCC-specific school or scholarships. So these scholarships um, are offered only to seniors enrolled at Cass Career Center. Uh, so they must be currently in a Cass Career Center program. As you can see, many of these scholarships are not available at this time. So if I scroll down here, um, they're not um, available. The majority of these scholarships will be open at the beginning of, Ma of March. Um, the deadlines will then be in April and the recipients will be announced during our award ceremony in May. So these scholarships um, are the ones that I am currently aware um, that will be offered to our students. Um, more may pop up uh, as the school year progresses, um, but these are what I know of at this point in time. So when we get closer to um, March, I will go around and visit the classes um, and show them how to access the scholarships. Uh, if a scholarship requires a teacher recommendation, um, and many of them do, please give that teacher, the one that you want to write your recommendation, at least two weeks notice. Um, teachers are approached by many, many students in the spring for letters of rec, um, and they need this notice so they can plan their time accordingly. So the next tab um, are CTSO scholarships. So CTSOs are career and technical student organizations. Um, at CCC, students can be involved in five different um, C five different CTSOs, and there may be scholarship opportunities available to them for one or more of these um, organizations. So on this page, I have links to the different CTSO scholarships. So for example, if a student is a member of Skills USA, then they're going to click on the picture. Um, and then they are taken to this page where scholarships are listed. Um, and then when they click on the link at the top, they will be directed to the Skills USA scholarship page where the applications um, can be ac accessed. And so here's all the specific scholarships with um, the actual scholarship applications. Let's go back to that. Um, so another one would be FFA. Um, these are links to specific scholarships for FFA students. Um, with these and with every scholarship um, that you look at, please pay attention to deadlines. Um, if a student submits an application after the deadline, um, they will not be considered for um, any particular scholarship. So please um, 
pay attention to deadlines when you're looking at these or any other scholarships. Okay, so we have these five CTSOs. So if a, mem if a student is a member of one or more of these organizations, um, there are lots of different scholarship um, opportunities for them, um, and it would be of great benefit for them to explore all of these options. Next tab um, I want to review is the spreadsheet that I keep the scholarship information. Um, so any scholarship information that is sent to me throughout the school year, um, if I am given that information, I plug it into the spreadsheet. So I have it organized. I can go down here. I have it organized by deadlines. Um, so please, again, pay attention to the deadlines. Um, right now we are in January, so you're going to go past those um, earlier in the year and start looking at scholarships that are um, offered or the deadlines are offered um, January and beyond. Um, each scholarship um, that is listed here um, will have the name of the scholarship, criteria of what they're looking for, um, the dollar amount, the deadline of the scholarship, and then a link directly to the application. I do add to the spreadsheet as I receive um, information on different scholarships, so students should definitely review this list on a regular basis to see if any additional scholarships um, have been added to this. Um, the next tab is the scholarship search engine. Um, and this is a list of websites that students can register uh, with the help um, from these websites, they create an account, and then they can um, get additional scholarship information that is directly sent to them. Typically, it's through email. Um, I would recommend only signing up for maybe two or three of these sites at most, um, because if they sign up for all of them or more than that, um, students can be just bombarded with emails. Um, and that can quickly be um, overwhelming to them. Um, but in terms of this website, if you just click on the link um, or the name of the, um, of the website, then it shoots you into that website where you will register with them and create an account so that you can start getting um, information from their scholarship databases. And then last but not least, I have created a page um, where our students can easily access their home high school scholarship pages. So CCC has students from 12 different high schools. Um, each high school has um, their own scholarship opportunities, just like Ms. Zaring has talked about um, in her presentation. So in this page, um, students can just find their school click on the picture of their mascot, and then be directed to their home high school scholarship page. So for example, if um, I'm an Archie High School student, you click on the mascot, and then you will be directed specifically to Archie's scholarship opportunities. Um, and they have very similar opportunities that Ms. Zaring has um, laid out for you for Harrisonville High School. They have their own local scholarships and um, additional um, scholarship information that they receive through their scholarship office. So I'm going to go back to my particular homepage, and that is my contact information right there. Um, so if you have any questions about the information that I've reviewed, please feel free to contact me at any time. Um, this um, is my email, my phone. Um, students are more than welcome to come into my office during the school day. Um, if they need assistance, have questions, um, I'm very happy to help them with any of this. And I hope that you have found this information helpful, and thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Alice Roach with the Harrisonville Public School Foundation, and I'm happy to share with you in this presentation about the foundation's scholarship programs. Before we get into too much discussion about scholarships, though, I would like to share some background about the foundation. The foundation organized in the early 1990s, and it's a nonprofit that's focused on supporting and enhancing the Harrisonville School District's educational programs and activities. 
So our work has included recognizing academic excellence, supporting teachers who are pursuing advanced degrees, honoring distinguished alumni, and dispersing grant funds that teachers can use to implement projects in their classrooms. So scholarships do represent just one area of the foundation's work. And in this particular presentation, I'll share with you about the foundation's two types of scholarship programs. Those are the Excellence in Academic Scholarships and our Endowed or Named Scholarships. Excellence in Academic Scholarships are $500 one-time scholarship awards provided to graduating seniors who have earned the Excellence in Academics recognition all four years of their high school careers. To be eligible for the Excellence in Academics honor, you must rank in the top 15% of your class academically based on your annual GPA. There's no application to complete for this particular scholarship program. If you qualify, then you'll automatically receive the scholarship. The foundation also administers several endowed or named scholarships that are made possible through the generous donations of community members, alumni, and others who have a connection to the district. This year, we'll make more than $30,000 in endowed or named scholarships available to graduating seniors. To be eligible for these endowed or named scholarships, you must complete an online application. In addition to the online application, which asks you information about yourself and what your plans are after you graduate from high school, you'll also be required to upload a resume and essays for each scholarship program to which you're applying. All of your application materials are due by April 8th. So now we'll detail each of these endowed or named scholarships so you can better understand what's required to apply and you'll get an understanding of who's eligible to apply. This first program is the Weaver and Young Families Memorial Scholarship Award in Public Service and Governance. This is a $1,000 one-time scholarship award presented to a student who's expressed interest in a career related to public service or governance. To be eligible, your GPA must be at least a 3.6 and in addition to the online application and uploading your resume and also including your essay, you'll need to submit two to three letters of recommendation for this particular program. The Joseph Hardin Guathme and Laura May Guathme Memorial Scholarship Award for Engineering or Business is a $750 one-time scholarship award presented to a student who's interested in a career related to engineering or business. To be eligible for this scholarship, your GPA must be at least a 3.6. And in addition to submitting your online application, resume, and essay, you'll need to include three letters of recommendation in your application package. The Bob Hodge Achievement Award has the potential to be a multiple year scholarship for the selected recipient. The recipient will receive $2,000 in the first year, and then that award is renewable for the next three years, so long as you maintain a 3.0 GPA in your post-secondary education. To be eligible for this program, you must have an ACT score that's at least a 25, and you also must attend a state school in Missouri. The William G. and Nettie Z. Deacon Family Scholarship is another one of these awards where you can have the option to renew it. You receive as a recipient $1,000 in the first semester, plus that award is renewable in your second semester for another $1,000. This particular program prefers to support students who plan to pursue careers related to medical or nursing fields, and you also must demonstrate financial need in order to be eligible. The Stephen and Virginia Childress Athletic Award honors students for their academic and athletic achievement. This is a $1,500 one-time award. The Wendell Yeager Rotary Scholarship will provide four scholarship awards this year, three to students at HHS and one to a student at the Cass Career Center. These $500 awards recognize students for their participation in community service. The John and Wanda Foster Construction Trade Scholarship provides a $500 scholarship to the selected student in the first year, and then the selected student may renew that $500 scholarship award in the second year, so long as that student maintains a 3.0 GPA. This scholarship program is meant to support students who have plans to study building trades, architecture, civil engineering, or another related field. The John and Wanda Foster Agriculture Program Scholarship is also a $500 scholarship award in the student's first year. The selected student then has the option to renew that scholarship in his or her second year, so long as that student maintains a 3.0 GPA in their post-secondary education. In order to be eligible, you must show active participation in the CAS Career Center's Agriculture Program or FFA chapter. The Scott Morris Memorial Scholarship provides a $1,500 one-time scholarship to a student who meets three criteria. 
Those are your ACT score must be at least a 21. You must rank in the top 25% of your class academically. And in your essay, you must describe how you've demonstrated strength in overcoming a trial or hardship in life. The Samuel A. Sloan, Evelyn Sloan, and Beulah Sloan McCoy Scholarship will honor three students who are seeking degrees in agriculture-related fields. These scholarships are each $1,500. The Allison W. Smith Memorial Scholarship will provide a $2,000 one-time scholarship award to a female student athlete. To be eligible for this scholarship, your GPA must be at least a 3.6. In addition to the online application, resume, and essay requirement for this scholarship, you must also submit two letters of recommendation. The selection process for this particular scholarship is a little different from the selection process used for the other endowed or named scholarships. Namely, the application review committee selects the two top candidates. Those two top candidates then move to an interview stage and the interview committee makes the ultimate selection about who receives the scholarship. The Kara Roberts Memorial Scholarship provides a $500 one-time scholarship award to a student who will attend the University of Central Missouri. To be eligible, your GPA must be at least a 2.5. So that wraps up the discussion about each of our endowed or named scholarships. I do want to leave you with a few tips as you're putting together your applications. First of all, consider whether you qualify for a given program. So look at items including the GPA requirement, if you're planning to major in a field that's similar to the fields that are priorities for a particular scholarship program, only apply for those scholarship programs where you are eligible. The second tip relates to your essays that you must submit. Ideally, you'll want to customize your essay for each particular scholarship. In some cases, scholarships will have specific questions that you'll need to answer in your essay. So be sure that you have customized those essays to the particular scholarship program. Third, it's important to remember that you submit all of your required documents by the application deadline, which is April 8th. So you'll need to submit your online application, upload your resume, upload essays. In addition, if any of your programs are requiring letters of recommendation, then you'll also need to include those letters in your application package. It's also important to proofread all of your materials. So a well-written application communicates professionalism and skill, and it's something that the review committee will likely consider. So some tips for proofreading include reading your materials out loud to catch any errors. You may write and then wait a bit before you submit in order for you to have a chance to reread to catch any errors. Or you may ask a family member or a friend to help you review your materials and catch any errors that you haven't already found. And the last tip involves your letters of recommendation. For these letters, you'll be relying on community members, teachers, coaches, and so forth to write these letters on your behalf. So you'll want to make sure that you give your letter writers ample time to both write the letter and get it to you so you can upload it by that April 8th deadline. So I'll mention again, the application deadline is April 8th. The foundation will make its decisions and then announce who's received scholarships on May 12th during the Senior Excellence in Academics program. If you have received a scholarship, you will receive a letter or an email after that May 12th date with more details about how you access your scholarship funds. Namely, you will need to provide proof of enrollment that you, that you are indeed enrolled in an institution of higher education. After you've provided that proof to the foundation, the foundation will then mail a check to your home address, and that check will be made out to both the college and you, the student. And you can take that check to your institution's registrar's office and deposit it there. You can find more information about all of the foundation scholarship programs on its webpage, which is harrisonvilleschools.org slash foundation. On this particular webpage, you can also find the online application that you'll need to submit as part of your application package. If you have any questions about the scholarship programs, the eligibility criteria, or the online application, and please reach out to Jill Filer, who's the foundation's executive director. You can reach her at jill.filer at harrisonvilleschools.org. So that wraps up our discussion of the foundation scholarship programs. To the graduating seniors, good luck with putting together your applications and congratulations on your upcoming graduation. That's a wrap on tonight's episode. Thank you for watching. We hope you got a lot of information regarding scholarships and we'll take advantage of the scholarships available for you as you graduate from Harrisonville High School. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback from tonight's episode, 
please visit our website, harrisonvilleschools.org, click on Speaker Series, and it will take you to a form where you can submit those questions, that feedback, or those suggestions. Once again, thanks for watching. The next show will be on February 2nd and focus on social-emotional well-being. Have a great evening.